In this lesson, you will learn about security concepts, data and information, and some common terms associated with cybercrime. You will also learn about the different types of threats to data posed by human intervention, ways of preventing unauthorized access to data, and the CIA model. Lastly, you will learn about social engineering, identity theft, and various macro settings in documents. To start, click the Next button. What is data? Data is raw, unorganized facts that need to be processed. Data may be random and useless until it is organized. When raw data is processed, organized, structured, or presented in a given context, it is known as information. For example, data collected from a population census is used to generate different types of useful information. Once this raw data is processed, the government can use the data to determine the literacy rate, population below poverty line, gender ratio, and much more. With the help of these statistics, it can then take important policy decisions. Next, we will discuss cyber crime. Cyber is a term related to the computer, hence the term cyber crime. Describes any criminal activity or crime that involves the internet, a computer system, or computer technology. This includes activities such as downloading illegal music files, stealing money from online bank accounts, and using others' identity for unlawful personal gains. Cyber crime is not only related to monetary offences. But includes non-monetary offences such as creating and distributing viruses or posting confidential business information on the internet without authorization. Common examples of cyber crime include ransomware attack, phishing, identity theft, internet fraud, and hacking. Click each term to learn more about it. Ransomware attacks are a very common type of cyber crime. It is a type of malware that has the capability to prevent users from accessing all of their personal data on the system by encrypting them, and then asking for a ransom in order to give access to the encrypted data. Phishing is a type of social engineering attack that targets the user. And tricks them by sending fake messages and emails to get sensitive information about the user, or trying to download malicious software and exploit it on the target system. Identity theft occurs when a cyber criminal uses another person's personal data, like credit card numbers or personal pictures, without their permission to commit a fraud or a crime. Internet fraud is a type of cyber crime that uses the internet. It can be considered as a general term that includes all crimes that occur on the internet, such as spam, bank fraud, theft of service, etc. Internet fraud is a type of cyber crime that uses the internet. It can be considered as a general term that includes all crimes that occur on the internet, such as spam, bank fraud. Theft of service, etc. Hacking refers to the crime of unauthorized access to private computers or networks, and misuse of it, either by shutting it down or tampering with the data stored or other illegal approaches. We have heard of cracking a safe, but what about cracking a computer? Cracking is the process of bypassing the registration and payment options on a software product to remove copy protection safeguards. It also involves turning a demo version of a software program into a fully functional version without paying for it. Can a crime be ethical? In the world of computers, it is possible. Ethical hacking is the use of programming skills to determine vulnerabilities of computer systems or networks. 
An ethical hacker explores these vulnerabilities to suggest changes which make networks or systems more secure and less prone to real-life hacking. Force majeure is an unexpected event, generally outside the control of human beings, due to which agreed services cannot be performed. It's usually called an act of God, but the condition may also arise because of human negligence. Incidents that could be categorized as force majeure are natural calamities, fires, extreme temperatures, lightning strikes, hurricanes, floods, war, and earthquakes. Many large organizations consider the likelihood of these occurrences in their plans and formulate extensive disaster recovery plans to maintain operations and rebuild the data after a natural or a man-made disaster. Almost all organizations are vulnerable to some form of data theft. Individuals having access to an organization's confidential resources may use its data for unlawful purposes. Threats to data may come from broadly three types of people – employees, service providers and external individuals. Click each term to learn more about it. Employees working in an organization have access to sensitive data based on their level of authority. Unethical employees can copy the data in an external storage device or transmit it via emails to the external world. A service provider is an organization, business or individual which offers services to other organizations or individuals in exchange for an agreed payment. The services could range from routine business services to complex IT solutions. At first, service providers usually have restricted access to an organization's systems. Over time, service providers develop a good understanding of their client's organization. It then becomes easier for a service provider to identify vulnerabilities in their client's systems and gain unauthorized access to the confidential data. External individuals usually do not have access to an organization's resources. Nonetheless, they are a potential threat because they may convince an employee or a service provider to access confidential data on their behalf. An expert hacker may also gain unauthorized access to confidential information without an insider's help. Knowledge Check The number of cybercrimes and hackers gaining unauthorized access to confidential information is increasing. It is important to learn about the types of theft or fraud and how to protect your personal information. Let's talk about identity theft. So, what is identity theft and who is the victim? Identity theft is a type of fraud which involves stealing money or gaining other benefits by pretending to be somebody else. Anyone can be a victim of identity theft. According to a Federal Trade Commission survey in the USA, there are almost 10 million victims every year. Cyber criminals can find and use the personal details of any individual to open bank accounts, apply for credit cards and loans, and get benefits using another person's name and identity details. Cybercriminals may gain access to your online bank account username and password to illegally transfer funds from your account. Organizations providing services to other organizations or individuals have access to highly confidential information. Organizations must carefully guard such information using appropriate security measures. The absence of appropriate security measures may lead to information theft, 
which in turn may lead to severe privacy and financial losses. It is important for an organisation to adhere to best practice, regulation and statute law when handling a client's confidential data. Failure to do so may result in serious consequences, such as lack of trust between the organisation and its clients, loss of potential business opportunities, erosion of the organisation's brand value, lawsuits claiming financial and emotional damages and breaches of regulation and statute laws. The organisation is also likely to be more closely monitored by regulatory bodies, resulting in rigorous system and process audits. Securing information and data is important. Let's look at a few ways in which information can be secured from unauthorised access. Use of passwords minimises the risk of data theft from computers or mobile devices. A secure password is a combination of letters, numbers and characters. A password should have at least eight characters and be changed on a regular basis. Apart from strong passwords, one can use encryption. Encryption is a technique used to code and decode data. Only the person having the encryption key can decode the data. Encryption software is used to encrypt the data. Once encrypted, only the person having the encryption key can decode the data. There are many benefits of encryption. Peace of mind. In case a computer gets lost or stolen, Encryption ensures peace of mind that the data is totally secure, unreadable and protected against unauthorised access. Identity theft protection. Encrypting important files ensures that fraudsters find it just that more difficult to steal identity-related information through unauthorised access safe decommissioning of a computer. When the computer and its parts are disposed of, Encryption ensures that data is not accessible, either by chance or through information diving. Compliance with Data Protection Acts Keeping files encrypted also ensures adherence to data and privacy laws of many countries. Although beneficial, encryption is a complex method which requires costly software. In case the decryption key is lost, there is a risk of losing the entire data. Encryption also reduces overall system performance. How can you secure data within an organisation? Confidentiality, Integrity and Availability, or CIA, is a model designed to guide policies for information security within an organisation. Click each component to learn more about the CIA model. Confidentiality ensures that the only persons with the right credentials can gain access to a system. An example of confidentiality is the username and password which is required to log in and access personal or official computer systems. Availability means that information must be available when it is needed. Computing systems that store and process the information the security controls that protect it, and the communication channels that are used to access this information must all be available and functioning. Integrity involves maintaining the consistency, accuracy and trustworthiness of data over its entire life cycle. Life cycle means a beginning, an end and everything in between. So data life cycle refers to the various stages which the data undergoes right from data collection to data archiving. Data must not be changed in transit and steps must be taken to ensure that data cannot be altered by unauthorised people. Privacy laws have been adopted worldwide. Their objectives vary from country to country but regardless of the objective Data protection laws tend to converge around the important principle that individuals should have control over their personal information. 
although the expression of data protection requirements varies across jurisdictions. All require that personal information must be obtained fairly and lawfully, used only for the original specified purpose, should be adequate, relevant and not excessive to purpose, should be accurate and up-to-date, must be accessible to the subject and must be kept secure and destroyed after its purpose is completed. It is important to understand the data protection laws of your country. In addition, you should also be aware of the laws of the countries in which your organisation is doing business. Remember, ignorance of the law is not an excuse to break it. Awareness of international laws, such as the European Directive on Data Protection that went into effect in October 1998, is a helpful reference. The IT policy of an organisation ensures that the organisation operates in a standard way by meeting all regulatory and best practice guidelines. It is important to understand an organisation's IT policy, which generally includes a computer security policy. IT policies of most companies are available on the company's internal websites. The IT policy document is also available from the system administrator or IT maintenance department. You can contact the system or IT department to obtain a copy of the policy document. Read, understand and operate the IT policy. Stay alert and follow guidelines to help your organisation avoid data theft. Social engineering is the act of tricking innocent users to obtain confidential information or system access. It involves psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. Social engineering is popular because it is much easier to get confidential information from a person than it is to hack his or her password. Social engineering can be executed in various ways. Common forms of social engineering include phone fraud, sometimes called vishing, phishing and shoulder surfing. Fraudsters use several methods to call users posing as a representative of a well-known company. They use publicly available information to gain trust and offer help or support to resolve a problem. The user unknowingly allows access to his or her computer system. After accessing the computer, the fraudsters manipulate system settings to steal confidential information. Sometimes they even manage to obtain credit card information to make illegal purchases. The other common social engineering technique is phishing. Phishing is the act of sending an email to a user falsely claiming to be a legitimate enterprise in an attempt to scam the user into surrendering private information. Shoulder surfing uses direct observation techniques, such as literally looking over someone's shoulder to get information. Shoulder surfing is an effective way to get information in crowded places. Information theft due to shoulder surfing includes credit card details, phone details, login ID and password, and so on. Let's revisit the definition of identity theft. Identity theft is a type of fraud which involves stealing money or gaining other benefits by pretending to be someone else. The four implications of identity theft are personal, financial, business and legal implications. Having your identity stolen can be both financially and emotionally devastating. Personal implications of identity theft include emotional distress, anxiety and even depression. Financial history and credit records can suffer from identity theft. Identity theft can leave an individual bankrupt, which could be financially and emotionally devastating. Businesses can also suffer financial losses from identity theft. An identity theft may result in loss of trust and loss of potential business opportunity. Identity theft incidents may expose an individual or an organisation to legal proceedings. Victims of identity theft can file suits against the organisation for their losses. 
a victim of identity theft may have to visit several public and private offices to get his or her records corrected and re-establish the lost information. We learned the implications of identity theft. Now let's see how identity theft can be carried out in various ways, such as skimming, information diving and pretexting. Click each image to learn more. Skimming is an act of using a small electronic device known as a skimmer to illegally collect data from the magnetic strip of a credit, debit or ATM card. This information is then used by an identity thief to make purchases or withdraw cash in the name of the actual account holder. Information diving is the practice of recovering technical or confidential data from discarded material, such as discarded hard drives. Pretexting involves a scam where the offender tricks the victim into revealing the victim's personal information with the help of an elaborate lie or an invented scenario. The key to the scammer's success is to win the trust of an individual and convince the person to disclose personal, confidential and sensitive information. You may have come across a macro when you opened a spreadsheet document. A macro is a saved sequence of commands or keyboard strokes that can be stored and recalled with a single command or a keyboard stroke. It helps in automating frequently used tasks. Most macros are created and written by software developers and are safe. However, some macros may pose security risks. A person with malicious intent can introduce a destructive macro in a document or file which, when executed, can infect the computer with a virus. Most of the Windows applications, such as Excel, PowerPoint and Word, provide various options to enable and disable macros. You can use passwords to help prevent other people from opening or modifying your documents, workbooks and presentations. Let's list the steps to password protect your documents. Click the File tab on the ribbon. Click on Info in the left menu. Then click on the Protect Document drop-down menu. Select Encrypt with password from the list. Enter a strong password and then re-enter the same password. Your document is now protected. Knowledge check. Practical exercises.
you have completed the lesson Security Concepts. In this lesson, you learnt about data and information, common terms, human threats to data, preventing unauthorised access, the CIA model, social engineering and methods, identity theft and macro-security setting.